when I first became a principal, I remember actually called my parents right away and I called my mom and I said, Hey mom, I just got accepted as the new principal of the school. And she said, you, I'll never forget. It. She was like, you. And to her, I was still her baby boy, right? She still calls me Georgie. I've mentioned this before. And I think one of the things that I love is that she still sees me as her kid because in many ways I still have, you know, kind of a, a child in, inside of me, I guess. And there's something really compelling about working with students because it brings, it makes me feel young. It makes me feel, um, you know, just energetic to see the youth, youthfulness. And I always say that if I ever had a super power, it would be to see the world through my kids' eyes. And looking at the world through my daughters, their eyes and how they see things. And it's something I really appreciate. And the reason I bring this up is because in this podcast with Brian uh, Faulkner from the Chicagoland area, he talks about his joy of being a principal and you can feel his enthusiasm, which I absolutely love in a time where it's really hard to be an educator, to feel that enthusiasm, but how do we get it, right? How do we get it with all the other stuff we have to deal with that isn't about kids, right? And he does a really great job explaining that because it can be very tough and i know people have struggled um all years i i struggled i struggled even getting this video together to be honest you um putting this intro together uh just because i got a million things on my plate too and i know people can feel overwhelmed but i think sometimes when we just take a step back and appreciate you know that we get to work with kids that that can bring us joy it doesn't mean it fixes everything but it can bring us joy and so i felt that when talking to brian i hope you feel it too Thanks again for uh, joining me for another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos and welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I have the wonderful privilege to have Brian Faulkner here from Huntley, Illinois, and I've been to Huntley before. And Huntley, if you are listening, so, hey, dude, I got like about 8,000 yeah. buttons on this, but I just <laughs> pressed the air horn. I don't know why I like it. And everyone knows this about me, and I know everyone's sick of it, but mm -hmm. I like it. And so, right? But to every guest, it's new. So, yeah, it is. Brian, Brian uh, is actually um, in Huntley uh, School District in the Chicagoland area. Uh, I don't, do you know I'm a Bears fan? Did you know this? I'm a I Dallas. didn't know you were a Bears fan. Uh, you always have basketball, never, never football. Uh, it's fridge, man. Bears. Refrigerator Perry is one of my favorite. Actually, not. Hey, listen. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> not only am I a Bears fan. The Bears. 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 And I got this. It does. Yeah. yeah, this is great. This is what a way to start this. Right. I this forgot. Day. Right. There he goes. <laughs> Actually, yeah. So <laughs> that to be to be totally honest with you. The only reason I have those sounds is because I had Joe Sanfilippo on. He's a Packers fan, so I just oh, would yeah. bug him about it, and I would play. Totally but sad. like, it's like, okay, I'll I'll take the those noises while we win every single year, <laughs> right? But yeah, you can play your little you can play your little noises, George, right? It was kind of unfortunately yeah. that's the truth. Unfortunately, right. things so are going to change. Sorry, I have like totally screwed up this introduction. So Brian yeah. is a principal, middle school principal. Um, Brian, thanks so much. It's been awesome to talk to you. And uh, Brian, for those of you who don't know, because uh, you, you weren't a part of this, Brian's been, you know, kind of offering me some therapy in between our podcast. So I've been just kind of bouncing stuff off of him and just dealing with stuff. So I appreciate you listening to me kind of go through some life changes, which will be you know, revealed in a later episode of the Innovators Mindset <laughs> podcast. But Brian, um, thanks for being on. And if you can just tell everyone a little bit about who you are and what you do and how you got there, that'd be a great way to start. Yeah, totally. Thanks for having me on, by the way. I really appreciate it. I know. It just made my day that you're a Bears fan. So go Bears. <laughs> Here we go. Right? <laughs> uh, I, don't make me play noises, man. <laughs> go for it. I would yeah. love it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Uh, so, you know, you and I were talking about this just a second ago, and um, I was one of those people that thought, okay, I'm going into education. I want to teach high school. I want to coach. Uh, I was in athletics when I was growing up, and then I couldn't get a job, and and I went on a middle school interview, and uh, you and I talked about my middle school mm -hmm. principal that was so influential to me, and I remember thinking to myself, I really like this guy, and I really like this team. This is, right. okay, I'm going to go for it, and I took the job, and it was in a middle school, and I have never looked back because I realized I'm still a middle schooler myself, and 
you know, one right. of the stories I like to tell people is that uh, my wife and I and our family, we were up at a, a touristy town uh, about a year ago, and we like to go into the gift shops, and there were these socks in the gift shop that I love. Some of them are appropriate, some of them aren't. Right. <laughs> uh, this pair happened to be appropriate, and <laughs> my wife looked at me, and she just showed him. And I was like, well, I got to totally buy those. It was seventh grader for life. And she was like, this is totally you. And I'm like, it is because I'm a middle schooler myself. I love connecting with middle schoolers. I'm on that wavelength. And I have never looked back. So I taught in the middle school. I was a dean in a middle school. I was an assistant principal in a middle school. Right. And now I've been a principal in a middle school. And there's just no looking back. And, and, and I absolutely love being a principal. I've always wanted to be a principal. And now that I've done this for 10 years or so, I can tell you that I love it even more than I did uh, when I first started. It's just something I've really embraced and I love. Uh, every part of my job is is outstanding. I, I couldn't think of doing something else other than what I'm doing right now. So that kind of catch, maybe catches people up to speed on who I am. Um, but again, middle schooler for life, you know it. So, so, okay. So a lot of people right now, like, first of all, every, like so many people are quitting teaching. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Unfortunately, yeah. I shouldn't laugh there, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> right. Like, well, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's funny to like a lot of people right now. And I think, uh, there's this kind of like overly optimistic, uh, like people are like, Oh, just your, you know, toxic positive, blah, blah, blah. But like, you know, it's nice to hear people love their job. still, and like, like, not that there's no, like crappy things that are happening in education right now. Like that's obvious. Um, I think sometimes for me, I, when I was in um, central office, uh, I felt like I really, I really struggled at first because when I was a principal, when I was like, Oh, I can't like handle what I'm doing in my office right now. I would just get up and I would go like into classrooms and go see kids. Yes. Right. And it was just like, okay, this is why you do what you do. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and then, and then, when I was in central office, I'm like, oh, I can't help this. And I get up and I'd be like, I don't, where am I going? I don't know. Like, I don't want to talk to half, you know, half of what's going on right now. Like, I just don't want to get into adult. I want to just be around kids. Yep. Right. And I think sometimes that is a reminder. I know it's not everything. And there's so many uh, things that you have to deal with outside of kids, which is really unfortunate. But when you, when you look at uh, like, not just teaching, but a lot of people don't want to be principals, never want to go into admin, let alone stay in the profession at a role. Like if you're pitching to somebody like, Hey, here's why I love being a principal. And here's why it would be awesome for you. Like, what would you say to, to someone about that? If you feel like you have the ability and the talent to lead, uh, you know, more people than what you're leading now mm -hmm. in the classroom as a teacher, this is for you. If you have the ability to overcome obstacles and help people grow in so many different ways, right? We talk about students and their growth, but we also talk about in a principal position, our staff growing just as much. And if you feel you have that ability and that talent to help people grow around you, mm -hmm. jump right in, go for right. it. You know, this is your calling and, and, and do it and, 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 you know, help people grow and meet those uh, expectations of just being successful, but being satisfied and happy with what you're doing. Yeah. And I, like, you can do, you can do that, um, to be honest with you, and you know this too, right? You can do that from any position. You can still help people grow your colleagues across the hall. Um, this might be a little controversial what I'm going to say, and I'm a, this is true though. Okay. So I remember I was like a ed tech lead in my school mm -hmm. and I would say like, Hey, you should try this thing to my, some of my, and they were like, whatever. <laughs> yep. and, uh, I'm not trying that. And, and I was like, oh, okay. Like, all right. Like, I can't make this person do anything. Right. And then when I became a principal, I would take the exact same approach and I'd say, you should try this. And people are like, yeah, I'm going to try it. I'm like, why? Wait a minute. What, what changes? Cause I'm talking the same way, but I, I do know that actually like we talk about distributed leadership. I think that's really important. I'm not downplaying that, but I want to impress my boss. I'm not going to lie. If you're yeah. my boss, I don't want you not liking me. And I might try things that maybe the person across the hall can't, because there is like a little thing with the authority, right? And I'm not saying like, I was like, well, you better try it or you're going to lose your job. Like I didn't have to say that, but I, I was like, why is like, why was this so hard when I was at this school? And I'm like, 
using the same tone, taking the same approach, but now I'm doing this, but now people are, and I'm like, oh, it's because I'm the principal, right? Because <laughs> yep. like, because like, like I remember on my, like, I was just weirded out how, like I was younger when I started, I was like 31. And I don't know, like, you know, I don't know if that's younger now um, for, for being a principal, but there is teachers that would have been there like 30 plus years. And they would like, I would walk in their class and they would like sit up and I was like, why, why, what? I was like, no one is doing this last year. Yeah. Right. And it's, it is just that title too. Right. And I'm like, I don't, I don't like, I don't want it to be like, oh yeah, like it's your way to be authority. But I do think there is something about, Hey, when the, the leader of the building, the person who, you know, kind of is the boss is encouraging this, then stuff actually happens. And I see like a lot of more stuff is um, happening with certain leaders because they have a focus and people are more not necessarily they're just maybe following the leader i don't know is that like totally i don't even know what i just said right? <laughs> no you're making total sense it's um but what i would piggyback on mm -hmm. you know what you just said is it's about creating that environment though where people feel that they are trusted they are respected right. and they can be who they feel they need to be and that's something i've tried to do as a principal from the get-go is that you have this vision or picture in your head of what excellence looks like in your position. Mm -hmm. Does, if you're a teacher, if you're a paraprofessional, if you're a secretary, assistant principal, we all have this vision or picture in our head of excellence. Mm -hmm. So I always say my goal is to bring that out of you and allow you to make that a reality. And that might look different for you than it does mm -hmm. for me. And that's okay. Because I think a lot of the times what happens is, oh, well, George is doing this in his classroom and right. I need to do that now. And it's like, no, you don't need to do that. I mean, you're focusing on students and, and their learning and their growth, but you may go about it in a little bit different of a way and that's okay. And, and right. so that's the environment that I've always tried to create uh, with the staff. It, it, it I, I actually have a certificate that a lot of people enjoy and they hang it in their classrooms. It's called the I messed up certificate. <laughs> and it's my way of telling you, Right. I want you to be creative. I want you to be innovative, but I want you to be you. And it's okay if you take a risk. It's okay if you flop. I don't care. Right. Because the fact that you're doing this and you're you're getting out of your comfort zone, that to me is going to make the difference when it comes to student learning and their own growth too. So, um, yeah, it's 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 super super important to create that environment from a position like mine. Well, like I I've I've had the the opportunity to visit a lot of principals. And have like some really, you know, kind of behind the scenes conversations. And there are some principles that basically, if you're not like me, then you're you're not good. Yeah. And I I always struggle with that, yeah. right? And I think there's there's a benefit. Whereas um, when I got hired as a vice principal, you could not have asked for someone who was more different than my principal from me. And that was in that was very intentional in his hiring of me. He's like, yeah, you're nothing like me. So a bunch of people who will never talk to me will actually come to you. <laughs> awesome. Right. And vice versa. And a lot of people who would never talk to him or me would go to him. And, yeah. that, and that was like part of it too. And so when you hear like things like, oh, scripted curriculum, I'm like, if you take away personality uh, of people, unless they're like horrible people and they hate kids, then maybe <laughs> yeah. that's a good time to take it away. Um, <laughs> but but other than that, right, I think that's, there. there's, there's kind of a, a detriment to this. And I think, you know, when you're talking about this, I think modeling by example, you know, like I think a lot of times when we were talking, when I was talking about this idea of authority, you know, kind of making uh, an impact, I do know that that makes an impact early, right? But but later people that wears off and then they want to see what you're going to actually do. And there there is this, uh, I used to teach this like Covey workshop thing. And I remember this one distinct example was really powerful. Um, this, this new um, principal, she came into a, a new school. They had a lot of trouble, a lot of issues, a lot of behavioral things going on. And they, the school is like, it was like, a, it was like a nice little video. I'm sure it's true. Um, Cause it was based on someone. But it was like, there was no pride in the school, right? And like, everything was gross, blah, blah, blah. And so she went into this bathroom and she said, hey, like, how come there's like, the bathroom stinks. There's literally, and they're like, well, there's actually like urine like caked into the floor and we can't get it out, right? And we've tried, blah, blah, blah. So she actually like went in the bathroom and got it out. And it was like, okay, like we got to pick it up, 
Like if this is the principal doing this, then it says something. And I, I always remember that story because that was such a powerful example to see how she she did this and like the tone that it set. Because I think a lot of times um, teachers look at a, a, an administrator who is really good at delegating uh, stuff, but won't do anything themselves. And then they're like, that wears off. Do you know what I mean? And oh, it's not like finding their strengths. Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Yes. Right. No, I totally agree. Yeah. I, like, and how do you, like, how do you, how do you model that? Like what, how do you do that in your role? I, I'm not willing to get my hand or I'm not uh, unwilling to get my hands dirty in any situation. I will do whatever it takes. I thought that was going in a different way. You're like, Oh <laughs> yeah. I know. I was like, well, there's, there, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a year, that, year in that. line for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm never I've never been afraid to just jump right in and right. where I can. Even uh, this morning we um, had a standardized assessment we were giving students, and we realized some of the testing tickets were wrong. Mm -hmm. I have no problem jumping right in and saying, "What do I need to do? I'll print, I'll cut, I'll do anything, right. you know, for us to come together and just make this happen." And that's just who I am as a person. I've I've always right. felt like leading by example is the best way we can lead, whether you're in a school or beyond, it doesn't matter. People are going to pick up on what you do more than what you say. So I can, and this comes from watching my father my entire life. He wasn't a man who was going to woo you with words, right. but you just watched him on a daily basis. And he said, man, this guy's a leader. Right. And I had friends my whole life going, your dad is, there's just something about him. He's really awesome. What did All your dad do? What did my dad do? He was uh, an insurance agent. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. But he, you know, he coached um, growing up. He coached a lot and just people gravitated toward him, towards him. And I truly believe it's because he led by example. And that was mm -hmm. my first exposure to, okay, if I'm going to lead, I got to lead by example first and foremost before anything else. Yeah. And like, like when I talked to you, I talked to Dr. Beelan. So like you're, you're, by the way, your district's blessed to have both of you, which is pretty Thank incredible. You. Thank you. Like both in the same district. That's yeah. amazing. Um, and really kind of thinking about that. You, you both remind me of some of the qualities when I was kind of interesting that you said about your dad of my, my father and my mom really? and they owned a restaurant and they were just kind of like, like they were just with everybody, right? It was like they made everyone feel welcome. Like I remember my dad coming out. It was like he kind of like sat up when he came out, you know, because it, it was just it was just interesting. And I, I feel there's like that that component of what my parents did in a restaurant was something that was like totally in me um, when I r ran a school. And I didn't really realize it. Like it's just kind of you just but sometimes that like it's modeling leads to osmosis right like that it just kind of like seeps into you that you just kind of take on the characteristics of that and i noticed you know the more i stood outside in the morning greeting kids the more staff started greeting kids outside their hallways right totally. and, and, and there is that connection so um we are we are recording this in the middle of march of 20 oh geez i was like what year is this <laughs> i think everybody's like like which which more which horrible year is this right now? So 2022, uh, you are pretty close to the end of the school year. Yep. And so like, how is that going right now? Like that you're, you're, you're like close. Are you, are you on spring break too? Are you doing this on spring break? Please for the love of God, you're nope. not doing this on spring break. Okay. Week, week and a half. We have a week and a half before yeah. spring break or two weeks. So yeah, we're almost there counting it yeah. down. So how, like how, how is that? How is it going right now with all that? Like that you're about to go on break. It's been a tough year. Uh, yeah. You know, you've heard this, you know this, um, you know, the constant change with uh, the pandemic and, you know, we're doing this, we're not doing this, we're going this direction, we're not going this direction. Right, right. right. With so much of it being out of our hands, it's just, it, it has led to teachers and faculties to uh, second guess or, or, you know, have anxiety over what's coming next. Right. Right. We've had some changes in the recent weeks that have probably made it a little bit better, but I can tell you that not only are kids struggling, our staff, mm -hmm. they're struggling too. Yeah. And it's, you know, how do we support an entire building? How do we support the adults in the building? Because obviously if they aren't getting their needs met, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to, to meet the needs of the students. But then we have these students. <laughs> how do we meet these needs? Kids are doing things now that they've never done before. Uh, 
you know, and I, and I think they're still trying to figure out and come out of this pandemic, but I don't know if normal is going to happen again. And I think we have to look at that directly in the face and say, what do we do now moving forward? How do we set up our school systems? I think kids are craving more individualism or even personalized learning opportunities because they were somewhat getting those opportunities when they were right. learning from home. Right. And I think coming back into school has been a huge shock. And then we as, you know, the staff and the teachers are saying, well, we used to do it this way. But now the kids may not be responding to the way we right. used to do it because they had a different environment for a year and a half. So, um, you know, there's a constant balance and a struggle of how do we support our kids not just academically, but as we know, emotionally and behaviorally as well, because they're struggling with that. So um, I don't know if I have the answer yet, but, you know, we keep trying every day. We keep showing up. We keep plugging away. We're uh, loving our students. We're educating our students. And, and I'm trying to do the same for the staff. Um, but, yeah, it's it, we're trying to wrap up a, a unique and crazy year and end it on a positive note. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, and it, it, it feels like. Um... But if next year, if next year is worse than this year, then <laughs> like nobody's going to be around. Can it be? I, we said that two years ago, but I, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, oh, 2020, that was terrible. Oh, this 2021, but next year, and it's like, okay, it's like let's nope. hey, double down on stuff. Like, it's just getting worse and worse and worse, right? Yeah. And so, hopefully, um, you know, I, I, like I, I appreciate what you're saying that the notion of like kids are having these different experiences, and I think one of the things that um, I think about quite a bit in all of this is the as a parent, the most important thing for me for my kid is that my kid can be a kid. And yep. I think a lot of times we are downloading adult problems onto kids and we're basically taking it and when I'll tell you, I I know like I'm I'm getting to that age where I'm like, I remember when you were a student and now you're a teacher and you're downloading adult problems on the kids, but you are like a goof. Right. You got to like mess around and yeah. now you're like, oh, kids need to be. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, hey, yeah, we want we want kids to change the world. But like, can we just let them be seven for a while? Like, can we just let them have that opportunity? And so, like, how do you kind of find that balance of like, hey, we know like kids are like kids are more aware of everything, which I'm like, I don't know if that's good. You know, like it's like, you know, the. There, there's, I don't know if this is true. Maybe I'm making this up, but which is what we, you know, the fact check me. I swear, I swear, like for a certain period of time, like crime and like a lot of like really big issues um, was worse when I was a kid. But it was like, yeah, just be able home for dark and don't go to jail. Right. Like that was like basically the standard for me as a kid. Yes. And now it's like, like we got like pay, little pagers. Oh my God. Like, data myself there you know you got like cell phones tied to a kid so you can like track them wherever they are yeah. and people are so freaked out and it's like but but things are in many places um in many spaces better or yeah. maybe not right now but they were for at least a period of time and i think sometimes awareness actually causes um more anxiety which you know uh, perpetuates a problem and it takes away childhood where i actually think there was a lot of like really bad stuff that was happening by my parents are like like i i remember i'm not even kidding my mom walked me to school the first day of kindergarten and that was it and then she's like there it is you're on your own <laughs> good luck and that was it and like now you know like i had i remember parents like carrying backpacks and and like pulling out books for kids in grade three like mm -hmm. you know setting them up yeah. and it's like is that you know and i, I understand that we get I'm just kind of going off now, but it is like, I guess, I guess the big question for me is how do we, you know, where do we find that balance of letting kids be kids and also like enabling them to, and empowering them to, you know, especially at the middle school level, cause they're kind of like going through a little transition. Like, how do you go through that process? Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of information out there and uh, kids, at least at the middle school level, you know, I can talk about that. They're having a problem processing all of this information. And, you know, I have three daughters of my own. And if they ever ask, can I use your phone to take a picture? They have, they'll take 25 pictures. Right. And I'll, and I'll say, why did you take so many pictures of the same shot? Well, I got to find the perfect one. Got to find the best one. Yeah. I got to find the perfect, but I'm, they're all the same. But I, I share that because that's the mentality right now is that I feel like 
there's a lot of awareness or there's a lot of information out there, but kids are expected to be perfect in all realms now. And what do we do here in a school? What do we do at our middle school to support them and make them understand that we are imperfect? You know, as human beings, we are imperfect because they have this, this mentality of we have to be perfect with everything we do. And I do believe that causes some students to maybe behave in ways that they normally wouldn't. And so now how do we find this balance, right? Because cell phones aren't going away. Social right. media is not going away. TikTok's not going away. How do we take all I do love TikTok. I'm not going to lie. I do love TikTok. Yeah, I know. It's, I mean, people send me TikTok videos all the time that I laugh at. Right. Um, but how do we help them process this information? And I think we almost need to start looking at more specifically um, ways that we can support them with this information because we have information overload everywhere. I don't even know what your original question was, but I'm going off now like you said. Here's a good one. <laughs> um, so how do we find this balance of like letting them be kids? Right. I, yeah. I think sometimes we have to understand that they're imperfect, especially in a middle school. And I, I've always looked at it, honestly, in a very easy way. Are you, you know, as long as you're not being disrespectful, as long as you're not hurting yourself or someone else, I expect you to make mistakes and I expect you to be imperfect. And I'm just going to look at every single moment like that as, as a learning moment. Because you're going to make mistakes regardless. And, and I can't expect you to be perfect because the world right now is expecting you to be perfect. And so I have to try to differentiate that somehow with you. And our staff has to do that with them. Um, but it's okay to let them be kids and let them do some of the things that they normally do. I, I usually don't get upset over some of the things that right <laughs> that happen, you know, with some of the behaviors. Because I'm like, Man, I did that too. You know, that was totally me. And times worse. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Right? Well, here's something. Okay. So as you're talking about this, right? So I like, I like post like a gym selfie every day. Yeah. I actually didn't today. I don't know. I just didn't. I was busy doing stuff, changing my life. Okay. So, um, I didn't today, but I usually do. And you know how many pictures I take that I decide one, I just take the right. one. That's all there I do. Go. And sometimes I see adults like they got soft lighting, they got filters, they got editing. And like, I've actually talked about this at the superintendent level. I'm like, look, you're wanting teachers to create stuff, but they don't have like a, a studio built like you do with your soft lighting and your editing team and all this other stuff. So you're like, yeah, you should create videos too. And they're like, yeah, but yours like has background music and is perfect and is like edited out. So there's no ums and ahs and things like this. And then you're wondering why they're terrified is because yeah. yours is actually, you're not doing your video. Your team is doing your video. And so I think part of it is like, we say a lot of things that we need kids not to like be struck by this, but like, let's like, we're not even kidding. That's the adults are terrible and they're doing this. Like I, I purposely, uh, well, I just, maybe I'm just lazy. I don't like do my hair when I do stuff. Right. I just like, I don't like look for angles and like, I, I know, like hold the phone up. Like I at least know, like, I guess know that one. I'm not doing like double chin selfies, but I'm like <laughs> holding that stuff up. So I, I like, I get that. But it's it's like, oh, these kids are like bullying each other online. I'm like, because you're jerks to each other online and they're watching you interact. But you think because you, you think you're right, you're doing it for a good cause. Whereas the bully, the bully always thinks they're right, whether it's a good cause or not. Right. But the, yep. it's not it's not the cause or or the thing that you're talking about. It's the the way that you interact with people. that are watching this. Like I, I actually remember seeing like. um a school counselor or like a person on a school council basically saying like i don't agree with this person so let, hey everyone let's go shame them and i'm like yeah, uh, yeah. You, if you ever give my kid heck for that like what leg do you have to stand on right yeah. but they thought they were right and i think a lot of times it's it's that idea of of like like we we say this about kids they're not i don't think they're necessarily learning from other kids i think yeah. they're learning from the adults yeah, I, I would agree with you wholeheartedly. So yeah, some of the posts that you see, it, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But we have to look at it somehow, some way yeah. and, and make some changes. Yeah, like, so hey, this is this is something. So I, I used to fly over Chicago all the time, right? And uh, 
there's this particular airline that you fly out of Chicago all the time, right? And I remember distinctly uh, going, I was like, the flights were canceled. And by the way, the flights were canceled because it was like storms. Right. Not because it was like bad company. I'm like, yeah, at blah, 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 you suck. And I was like on Twitter and just like blasting them and stuff like this. But I, I'll tell you, maybe I've just grown up. I don't want to fly in storms. I like, I like, I don't like that stuff, right? I don't like flying on broken planes. So like, hey, guess what? I'll wait an hour if you fix the plane. I don't want to, I'm not in that big a rush to go on a broken plane. Yeah. But then I actually thought, okay, so here I am just crapping on like a company, some person who's not the CEO of the company, who's just running their social media account now feels like crap because they have to deal with me. And, and it's like, yeah, I got a $50 coupon in my DM. So I'm pumped about that. But like, but then if you, like when I came to your district, if one of your teachers did the exact same thing to me, because they didn't like something I said, I'd feel like crap. Yeah. And I'm like, how am I any different than the person that works at the airline? Yeah. And I, I think, I think a lot of that is kind of, you know, our modeling. I don't even know how, like, I don't know how we got on this topic. <laughs> we did though. No, like, I don't, I don't know either, but I want to get off of it. So uh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, but I, you know, like, how do you, like, how, how can we do that, you know, as a school, um, you know, because I, I think it is important that we do interact in these spaces as a modeling technique, you know, as we talked about earlier with how you model your leadership, right? I think it's like, we want kids to not act perfect, but then we do soft lighting and then we do 30 pictures too. So yes. like, how, how do we get to that space? Like, how do we do that? You know, especially it's such a, like, Oh my God, when 13, what an impressionable age for me. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember 12. I don't remember 14, but I remember 13. It's funny. Right? I do too. My eighth right? grade year. I totally remember it. Like it happened yeah. yesterday. Yeah. It was just terrible. I yeah. like, right. Like I, I swear, I swear. I was like, like when I got to middle school, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get 13 year old George. He's whoever that person is. He or she's coming back to haunt me. Cause I, this, there's a lot of karma coming my way. Right. Yeah. And I had those experiences, but like, how, how do we, how do we model that as a, as a staff, you know, as a, a community, what, how do we do that? Well, I, I think we need to lead by example as we mm -hmm. brushed upon, you know, not too long ago of it's easy to be negative. Yeah. Uh, naturally as humans, we, for some reason, just kind of go into that negative route. It's hard to be positive and it's hard to be positive on a daily basis. And so I think if we lead by example in that area, I, that could make a difference. I, I'll be honest. I, I've thought a lot about Twitter. I I am not as active on it, and it's because yeah. it was depressing me. It, it was honestly bringing me down. I was like, I can't, I can't do this right now. I'll post here and there occasionally, but it's always going to be something positive. And you know, we have the opportunity to change that narrative right. and share every. You know, you talked about Joe San Filippo, and he always talks about every moment is a moment to build culture. And what are we doing to highlight the positives? What are we doing to highlight all the great things going on, the great people, the great students, you know, that we have in our buildings? And I think we need to start there. I think we need to lead by example. I think we mm -hmm. need to build up our, our profession a little bit oh, um, by being a little bit more positive about the impact that we have and that there's always going to be shade thrown at you no matter what, unfortunately, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But how do you overcome that and, and teach our, our students and our staff to overcome some of those situations? And, and process those emotions and be able to move on from them without it really being such a large hiccup like it usually is right now. Right. One post, <laughs> you know, it, it, one post is all it takes for, for me to just feel awful about myself. That's mm -hmm. one person out of, you know, thousands potentially. And we, we need to play the mathematics game of there right. are more positive things and people out there. How do we get people to continue to to you know uh discuss and communicate those positives in a great way yeah and i, I think both I, you know like talking to you brian you know i i know both of like both you and i know there's like a lot of issues in education there's a lot of things that need to be addressed and solved and i think um the that whole notion like oh like you know talks of positivity you kind of touched on that earlier um i think a lot of times people use that as a shield just to kind of crap on people and but as opposed to like hey no we're not like i'm not blind to stuff but i am trying to find a solution i'm trying to figure out a way forward just the way we want kids like hey here's some here's like a, a an obstacle that's in front of you 
you can talk about the obstacle all you want, but then the obstacle doesn't go away. Yeah. How do you deal with it? How do you kind of go through that process? And how do you actually interact, you know, with uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, is, uh, and I can't remember it exactly, but it's just the, the idea behind it is from Dale Carnegie. Uh, it's like, you can't, you can never win a fight or an argument because when you lose, you lose. But when you win, you actually take the dignity of the other person away and they never come to your side anyway. Yeah. And it's like, I, I always kind of think about that. And like, how do we, when we get into these really tough conversations, um, ask questions first before we make statements about someone else? Because yeah. there's a lot of people that interact with those posts and, you know, see that. But I promise you, there is way more people who don't, interact with those posts but they make a lot of judgments about the profession they make a lot of judgments and they're like yeah i don't know if, if that's how you're talking to you know adults i don't necessarily i'm kind of, in public i don't know how i'd want you to talk how you'd be talking to my kid in private yeah right so yeah. i think that i think you know as you said uh the modeling thing is really important and you know like and this is not like that this is not like a uplifting inspiring conversation but i think we're having it in a respectful way right like i oh. i also know people have really crappy things that have happened and they yeah. we need to address that too right and so totally. it's, it's how, how we do that too where the the message doesn't got lost lost in the delivery no. so so you got we got summer break coming up and uh and we're going into and this is actually probably the time this is going to be published uh people are going to be on break okay and so so you know i was going to ask you about like what do we do next year nah i'm not asking that all right what about break well, like, what, how do we take that time that we can come back next year if we choose to? Because I know, and if hey, if you don't choose to, I get it. Yeah, I don't, don't blame people. You make whatever decision is best for you and your family. How do you how do you see yourself taking that time before you go into next school year? Well, hopefully, I'll do a lot of fishing, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a lot of walking, right? But. Honestly, I'm the type of person where I love to think about work when I'm not at work. And, and I know that sounds crazy, but I'm thinking about, you know, what can I do um, to continue to help people grow? And I'm, I'm passionate about that. And, and to be honest with you, that's what I'm thinking about on my break. And most Dude. people are going to be like, this guy's an idiot. What's his problem? Dude. But that's what I love. And, and, and I think about, okay, what can we do? How can we do this? How can I better support the building? And, and it's passionate work. And I, and I try to, you know, get a pulse of the building of what is, what do we really need? And then when we get to that summer break, I'm just going to go, go after it. And, you know, week after week, just look at how can I do this? How can I help? How can I support? How can I be a resource? And I know it sounds crazy, but that's what I thrive on. That's what I love because you know, I essentially got into teaching because I wanted to help others. Right. And I right. figured, hey, why not help kids, right? It makes mm -hmm. most sense. I just, what makes me feel really good about myself is helping others. And so when I do have those moments, I go on walks every night. I think about mm -hmm. work. I think about what I can do, how I can get better, how I can grow. It's actually therapeutic, believe it or not. But I'll still take I, know, I, I know why. Why is that? Because the Cubs suck. Oh, I know, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Tough being you know, a Cubs fan. That's probably like, oh, Cubs are no good this summer. I was going to start no. thinking about work. <laughs> I, I actually, when you said, it, I'm like, oh, dude, come on. Like, you, you really, gonna... and then I was like, I, I kind of do the same thing. Yeah. Right. And like, yeah. when you, you said it, you said it beautifully. Um, you know, it is, uh, we were just on a vacation and I needed time to go and blog and to write about education, to write about my thoughts. And it's like, if I don't, I feel like I'm going to explode. Right. Yeah. And it's actually like helpful to me. And I think that when you're in a space and I, you know, I, I encourage this, you know, like, I don't think I, I was, I'm just writing an email for this week. And I said, you know, like I started blogging and writing not to show the person behind the educator, but to show that I'm a person that happens to be an educator. Those are two different, like, there's a two different yeah. things, right? Cause I think a lot of times we, we get caught up in that whole persona, but I also do think, you know, it, it is a blessing to, to do, do something that you love. And it's, it's great to have that opportunity and, and, you know, not everyone gets that and we're blessed and I can feel uh, your enthusiasm, not only for kids, which is like kind of easy, right? Yeah. The yeah. kids are pretty easy to, to, to like, but, 
the adults as well. So yeah. um, your your staff, you know, talking to you and Dr. Bila, I can't. I still I still can't believe you you two are in the same district. <laughs> Whoever's the the whoever hires principals there is like needs a raise. Awesome. We'll right? tell them that. <laughs> uh, right. Well, and you could say, well, or you could pass it down either way, right? Yeah, so, so yeah, we'll take that. That's fine, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. but it, okay. it, it, it was awesome talking to you because I know we connected in person years yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we got to sit down and talk and just okay. chat today. So yeah, I appreciate you having me on. It was uh, a fun experience. Well, hey, and since, you know, since, since this is it, this is the end of it, I'm trying to find <laughs> what the heck. Bears. My button's not working. Where is it? I was going to play it, but I got... Here we go. Yeah, I was actually... I was actually... The first Super Bowl I ever watched was 85. Really? Yeah. And then I'm just loyal to my teams. Yeah. So like, I, I'm a Lakers fan. The Lakers were good when I was a kid. I'm yep. actually a New York Islanders fan because the Islanders were good when I started watching as a kid. Right. I'm a Lakers fan. Uh, yeah, and I'm a Bears fan. I'm actually the only team, the baseball team that I was loyal to is the Expos. They're gone. Really? Yeah, they're gone. Talking so, about bringing them back, maybe. We'll see. Maybe yeah, they're not coming back. They're yeah, not coming back. Coming. They're, they're coming back to the eight fans who used to watch the game in person, right? <laughs> There's a reason they left, right? Nobody yeah, true. Cares. true. But hey, Brian, thanks, thanks so much. And uh, please say hi to Dr. Beeland. Please say we'll hi to everyone in your district as well. we'll uh, is there, I know they're a wonderful group, but everyone, thanks so much for taking the time to listen. Really appreciate you being here today. Hope you have a wonderful day.